Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we are gonna mount an RS1 front differential into this Polaris Razor Turbo in place of the OEM diff, which is much smaller. OEM here. So we'll be replacing this bad boy. We'll be trimming the frame and we'll be getting that thing in place with an adapter bracket. This is the bracket from CCM, Kaufman Custom Machining, designed by Joe Kaufman. The same bracket is available from all things UTV and this installation will apply to pretty much any razor into which you're putting an RS1 slash Turbo S differential. So I know a ton of you guys are here because you just want to know what section of the frame you need to cut out in order to fit this diff. Let's dive into this. Okay. This video will focus on showing you what you need to modify on your razor to fit this RS1 differential. If you want an in-depth step-by-step, then check out the extended cut. One final look here at everything. All the paint is dry, all the trimming, all the cutting is complete. Everything looks really nice now. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to cut out. I'm taking a bunch of higher quality photos that I'll post on the website. Um, so that you guys can take a really good look at, at, at how you have to cut out your frame so you can get it the first time without having to put the diff in and out multiple times. I've cut that section out first, which I figured would give me better access to the section under here because uh, it's hard to get in from the other side. I don't have anything really small. I don't have a plasma cutter on hand. Tension to how much space is left here. It's kind of in the middle of that, that, that radius. Here is the big cut on the bottom, the main cut. You'll be able to see it better there with the piece of paper behind it. You see the notch on the bottom right there. That's important to clear the kind of nipple or the, the, the chunk that sticks out on the bottom front end of the diff. Pay attention to the black arrow. That 90 degree edge needs to be beveled down like you see here. And you also have to enlarge the size of the drain plug hole. The drain plug has to be increased in size. Here you see two more of the cuts that you need to make. Here we've cleaned out, we've opened up the bottom section and we've trimmed it out as far as we can until we're up against the steering rack here and here. You've got to take the head off the bolt on this bolt. I did all four just for the heck of it. You don't really need to but you have to do that one. Here you can see the drain plug from up top. Divot out is what you need to add. This is usually a, a sharp 90 degree kind of piece of sheet there. That has to get shaved down, kind of beveled down on an angle for clearance. The section out of the fair lead comes out here. You'll be better to able to see this on the photos. Like I said, the photos will be pasted on or posted on the website as well as I'll include some in this video. You'll be seeing those in a sec. Here you can see the main front cutout better. What I've taken out, you can see some of that lip I've left in there, that I've taken out. We've trimmed out all this section. This is usually where two of the main front mounting locations are for the OEM diff. Similar to the two in the rear there, it mounts at four corners. Hope you can see that okay. You don't want to remove that section. And then we've notched out the rad or intercooler support, whatever you want to call it there. Uh, just flush with this section here without removing the meat behind here. You leave this bottom section, you just notch out the top here. Realistically, you are not cutting out a ton of meat. This is the fluid we should be using. So this is what's going in the diff. John Deere High Guard. Proceed with filling up the front differential now since it comes shipped without fluid. The diff has been filled up with fluid. As you saw, it's got the John Deere High Guard in it and it's ready to go in. Before we get to installing the diff and the bracket, let's do a quick rundown. What you're seeing here is everything that was cut out. It's not a lot. Here you see the main cutout on the front of the vehicle before the notch is removed on the right hand side. You see how thick some of those sections are. Making this cut wasn't too difficult, but you can see it's like a multi-stage cut. Here it is painted up, everything looks nice with the notch in there to clear the nipple on the diff. 
As I mentioned before, high quality photos will be available on the website at www.adrenalinejunkieprod.com. Here you're seeing how we beveled off that edge and enlarged the drain plug hole to clear the new drain plug on this diff. It's in a different location. You're definitely gonna wanna do this so you can easily maintain your fluids. Coming up is the cut from around the steering rack there and you have to shave down one of those bolts on the bottom right. As I had mentioned, I shaved down all of them but you don't have to do that on your machine. Here is the notch on the rad support. This was a pretty easy cut here. The hardest cut was definitely the one from the fair lead just because it's hard to get in there. This cut is a little harder to access, but pay attention to what you cut out and what you leave in there. You don't want to cut too much out on this one. If you have any questions or suggestions, make sure to chime in in the comments section below. Now let's get that new diff installed. well. You're going to want to line up the prop shaft as well as the hole for the roll pin. If you have a solid mount carrier bearing, you'll have to undo it to get the shaft on. Now we can start installing the adapter bracket. Make sure you leave all the hardware very loose. Right now the goal is to get it in place and then line it up. They also say that you should clock your vent to the back. Once the vent's adjusted, connect the tube and move it out of the way. Now we'll get this plate in there and we will loosely fit the hardware. This also doubles as a winch mount plate, so everything seems to be lining up okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and start the rest of those. Okay, now that I've started those six bolts, just finger tight, we're gonna mount these two front bolts here with the sleeves. So in order to line them up, you gotta make sure everything's loose. The bracket itself needs to be loose because you got a lot of different holes lining up here, so you might have to give it a bit of a tap one way. So I found putting a pry bar in here. Let me drop the plate down a little bit. And then it let me get some clearance in there so these sit under. And then I can get my bolt started and I can probably smack things into place. I found loosening the two back bolts here until they're about maybe halfway engaged. It gave me a little bit of forward movement. So now these are the first bolts I've actually tightened up because I feel they're good ones to kind of pull everything into place. Now you can go around and start snugging up the rest of the hardware. Be mindful not to strip those bolts going into the aluminum. I'm gonna go ahead and start snugging these guys down. Pay attention and make sure everything's tightening evenly and do not over torque. Torqued up all these bolts. Now we're gonna do the main through bolts. You need a 3 8 inch Allen head and a 19 mil for the one side on the nut. So you do a nut and washer on one side and then the Allen head on the other. So do our washers and then our 19 mil nuts, 3 8 Allen on this side and we'll snug them up. Then the last ones will be the ones that go into the gusset here and also connect to the A-arm. Don't torque these down, you'll have to remove them to tighten the A-arm bolts. Once everything's snugged up and pulled into place, you need to make sure that the roll pin hole in your prop shaft lines up well and there's no binding in the drive line. So with that being done now guys, we are officially in the check over stage. Gonna check over all the nuts and bolts that I installed, check over all the pieces that I, I have around the diff here torque up everything, double check it, triple check it, and we are into reassembly. Reassembly is obviously just the opposite of what you did to disassemble to get to this stage. The rest is pretty easy. After your first ride, go through everything, double check all the hardware, all the bolts, make sure everything's snug, make sure that diff is engaging well, and there's no issues or binding in the drive line. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you'd like more information and an in-depth step-by-step guide on how to do this conversion, then head on over to the YouTube channel to see the extended length version. If you found the video helpful, then please, Subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, and share it with your friends. If you'd like to help support the channel, then head on over to our Shopify store and check out some of our cool Team AJP stickers and swag. You can also consider heading over to Patreon and becoming one of our patrons. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video. Ride safe out there.